Hello there. General to movie. Hello and welcome to another Primal Fray devlog. A journey on which we are making a turn-based strategy game. You know the drill by now. This week I have done a lot of technical stuff, which I cannot easily show, as I would with a graphic time-lapse, for example. But I thought a little about it and realized people on the internet love lists, top 10s, top 5s, etc. So today I'm gonna give you a list of my own. Top 4 things I changed in Primal Fray last week. <laughs> Let's go. Number 1. Two action turns. Primal Fray doesn't work like most strategy games. By that I mean that instead of being singular, the turn is divided into two steps. Let me explain. In Heroes, for example, but it happens in most of games. If a unit is to move, you have to choose its final destination. If you want to attack with it, you have to choose such hex to be able to 1. Go to it and 2. Hit an enemy from it. It has to go in one cohesive step, so you cannot just move and then attack. You have to move and attack, or just attack, or just move. Single decision. In Primal Fray I wanted to expand on choice idea and divided the turn into steps. Two steps exactly. Movement and attack. Why? Well. I have plans for multiple abilities, which you will be able to use, and they have to fit somewhere. Let's take heroes as basis and take simple walking and melee attack as our first two abilities. Obviously, you can use one in the move phase and other in the attack phase. So there are two more slots to fill. What if our ice golem could freeze the water as his movement ability? He does that instead of moving, but he can still attack. Or, if he uses the second ability of his attack phase, he may, for example, block and get some shields. So now you can move and hit, move and block, but also freeze and attack or freeze and block. So four options already. Isn't that cool? It will get even more interesting with ranged attackers. So you may, for example, hit and run as an in-game mechanic. No problem. If someone is attacking a ranger, you may move or teleport or something like that, and still shoot your enemy. So how does it look in the game? Well, for now there are no secondary abilities. I have just done play movement and attack, like in most games, but I had to design them in a way so that they support this idea in the long run. You can see it is possible to hit enemies and bring their HP down and also kill them, so the HP bars are working and all these mechanics. One feature I had to add is possibility to automatically skip movement phase. It occurred to me that having to skip each turn while during melee combat was a real bummer. So now you can see everything you can hit, both before and after the move, and are free to attack at any time. Quite cool if you ask me. Number 2. Interacting with player. You have already seen those red hit signs indicating what you may hit. It's my primary way of both showing the player what's going on and enabling him to perform actions. Because my game is grid based, everything has to be oriented somewhere on this grid. You can't stand or attack something in between hexes. Because of that, I thought it would be best to allow hexes themselves to be the main operators. So take a look at my hex prefab. As you can see, I have a canvas here. For you that don't know, it is basically a space in which you can operate with UI elements, such as buttons or text, uh, which happens to be exactly what I do. The shape you can see here is basically a hitbox for my button. It matches the hex perfectly so that if you hover above it or click it, the button will register. Depending on the state of the round, I can also display different things here. I have my you can move here indicator, attack indicators and even buff ones for support primals. What basically happens in the game is something like this. The turn of Primal begins, my level manager uses pathfinding and Primal movement to calculate every possible hex he can move on. Then it searches through all my hexes until it finds all the corresponding ones. Then it tells them to show that they are walkable. Then the magic starts, as the level manager doesn't do anything else further. It's the hexes themselves. Those chosen allow you, the player, to click them and react differently when you hover your mouse above them. Others just won't do anything if you click them. If you finally decide and click on one, it sends information back to the level manager and it takes everything from there, telling the primal to move on a calculated path, telling hexes to turn off, and disabling any input from the player until the movement finishes. So what's cool about that system is that the decision part is on the side of the hex. 
and it will always work in the grid-based environment and I don't have to adjust for everything. The hex just tells the level manager, hey, I'm hex number 72 and I was clicked and I was displaying movement possibility, so probably the player wants the primal to move there or I was displaying the attack me ability, so probably the player wants to attack anything that is standing on me, so on hex 72. It works quite nicely. Number 3. Map generation. There was a whole video already about map generation, but I would like to show you guys some improvements I have made. What you can see here is a, what is called scriptable object. I called it map data and it stores all the settings of my map basically. What you can see here is a basic grassland object I created. For now I have three objects, so basic grassland, desert and my test biome but I can create any more I want. So if I want a new biome, I will just click add another one and change its stats. What the stats basically do is the name. I basically search for the for this element by tag. So if I want to tell my man level manager to generate a desert. Right now I'm doing this through these buttons. So this button, for example, tells the level manager to generate basic grassland and the level manager searches through the map data and searches for basic grassland right here. Biome name grassland basically allows me to search for hexes. It's like a unique name. So you can see that this hex grassland main is like my main hex on the grassland and I can search through it for it by code by this tag grassland. The same goes for desert. Uh, so it all works quite nicely. Coming back to map data, there are also other stats I went into detail in my first video, so island size, size randomness, number of islands to generate, how rocky the terrain is, how watery, uh, chances for add-ons, etc. And also colors of the, of the background and colors of shadows, it's all stored here. What's so nice about this improvement is I can basically uh, create new... These are like packages, I can create any number of them I want and uh, that allows me to quickly shuffle between my main grassland, for example, and my testing ground here, um, or a desert in that fact. So, yeah. Number four, hit animations. Final thing I have done recently was hit animations. They add a lot of power and pop to combat, and the best part about them is that they do not require additional sprites to be drawn, what basically happens during hit phase is me enlarging the sprite. During that, I reference a script that changes its material to display pure white. I created this ultra simple material using a shader myself. You can be proud of me now. <laughs> As it comes to dying, I also made a shader for that. Here you can see my primal and right now he's using basic sprite material, so basically displaying him as he is. Uh, if I were to change that to, for example, uh, outline material, he will display outline. We've done it a few videos ago. I have also the white material, which I display during the hit animation. So if you, if I show you the primal get hit, he basically is enlarged. But what really happens is I change the material through code. So he's basic sprite, he grows, here he becomes white, he's white till here and then he comes back to his normal normal color. It happens so quickly in game that it looks good. But I don't really want to talk about this because it's quite simple. I wanted to talk about the dissolve material. It's this one. You can see nothing happens or like he's gone, but that's because of the property of this material. And when I adjust this slider, the, you can see that the look changes. So if it's one, he's whole visible, zero, not visible at all. And basically, I'm changing this slider's value through code for my primal to dissolve and disappear in the game. The shader itself is quite interesting, honestly. Uh, I can show you right now. So here is my dissolve shader. The, cacti the cactus is an example here, but that's not really important. Uh, here I import the texture so I can import the primal as you saw before. Mm, what I really do is I create this simple noise and noise is basically a uh, random shapes of black and white and the grays in between and these grays are what matters to us and basically I step it so this is the fade value if it's zero everything gets uh, is black here I, I suppose 
and if it's one it's all white or the other way around i'm not sure so basically i changed this gray scale to zero and one binary uh, difference of black and white and i also make a this is for the second version so like the one is bigger, the one is smaller, because the step value is a tid bit smaller. And it creates this effect, you can see, see here, it's not really big, but this is what's, what's left. Like, we take this noise and cut it from the picture, basically. So everything that is cut here, in the smaller version, will be preserved here in the original color. Everything that is preserved in the larger version will be recolored to give this, like, soft uh, yellowish look and it will be a sort of outline to give it like a tattered edge and if i change the fade both of these change and the whole picture gets adjusted accordingly um so yeah that looks quite cool it's like on this weird 3d ball here but in game you have already seen it looks quite nicely Whew. okay we reached the end of the changes or at least major ones so far Next time, I will work on my map generation and graphic a little more, because right now I am not really pleased with what I have. If you want to share some ideas, feedback, or help me decide what to do next, uh, leave a comment or join my Discord, that would be the best, where you have biggest impact on my game by getting in touch with all the other creative people around me that inspire me every day. Your involvement means the world to me, and I'm thankful for all of you that are engaged with me right now. So. Hit that sub button and see you on my Discord, I guess. Until next time, guys. Cheers.